Art is, I think, very important because it is an encapsulation of a lot of complexity. A subject like climate change, which is so incredibly complex, you need to engage with emotionally. And that's what I think is so powerful, really, is that you can look at a piece of art which has been stimulated by climate change and it sets your mind turning over, contemplating things in a different way. This art project is quite exciting. What Wayne is trying to do is capture the sound of the air being released from the ice. If you listen to a piece of old ice, you can hear it crackling and snapping and popping. And what he's listening to is air from the past being released back into the atmosphere. Now that might be air from the last ice age, when the levels of carbon dioxide were so much lower than today. And what he's trying to do is get that, uh, that concept across of the, of the sound of the ice crackling away, the sound of the air being released, and the sound really of the past, and that understanding of how that past is informing what we understand about climate change today. One of the wonderful things that I've thought about ice in particular is that there are a large number of unspoken histories and stories written in the ice, both metaphorically and literally. When we look at ice, we're holding within our hand a, a certain history is disappearing, is vanishing immediately. I've always thought that artists have got an opportunity to probe some of these histories and communicate some of these histories in ways which are slightly different to scientists and yet can be informed by the science. From my experience in glass, somebody recommended that Wayne talk to me because he was interested in using glass sculpturally to represent uh, his ideas that had come from his experience with ice and his thoughts about uh, ice, water and water vapour. Graham shared my interest in this scientific and artistic approach to issues of the climate and material and we paid a visit together to go to see Robert Mulvaney at the British Antarctic Survey. So what we do when we drill into the ice is we're trying to collect a complete column of ice that goes from the surface all the way down to the bottom of the ice sheet which might be two or three kilometres down. That column of ice is, is snow that has fallen over thousands of years. You essentially get no melting in the polar regions, so the ice builds up year on year on year. So when we drill into the ice, we're drilling into the past. To see the process that they were using to analyse that ice and uh, cut it up, extract the gases and analyse those gases, and the fascinating traces of data that they were gathering from these ice cores. We can look at the climate over many thousands of years. We can also look at the atmosphere over many thousands of years because locked in the ice are tiny bubbles of air and these are the air from the past. In fact, it's the only place on Earth that we can still access old air. And that allows us to build up a picture of how the climate is changing, how the atmosphere is changing, particularly the greenhouse gases and how the two are related over thousands of years. I'm really impressed by the way Robert and his team are extracting such important information from these tiny samples that are captured in the ice. We thought that there was um, multiple ways of telling the story of, of the relationship between what's happened in the past, the present and the future. The carbon dioxide and methane that's released produces a fantastic minimalist, almost techno sound. And the idea that one could, in effect, record some of the oldest ice that's ever been extracted from the Earth and record the sonic properties of these things to complement the visual and the spatial aspects would somehow contribute to a, a much richer, much more an unusual narrative than we get purely through statistics alone. I think it's a very powerful message that he's trying to get across that we do know about the past. This ice is really very special and it's telling us something really quite important about climate change. One of the things that the installation can bring to bear is, is an intimacy that um, is not freely available and the hope that maybe the conversation can be brought into much more of a direct and immediate conversation. The irony that it's not okay, um, that this thing has actually disappeared and that all we have left of it can be most clearly felt in the artwork rather than any science because the, the glass is gone. And so that was quite a powerful moment for me to realise that actually an artist can engage with this work in much more poetic ways than, than sometimes is 
dealt with by sciences? We change behavior because we see the world differently. And one of the really important things um, about art is we have that aha moment. And we might walk out of an installation and think, oh. And as a result of that, oh, we start thinking differently and then we do things differently. So I think we each have a choice you know, about what we do. And I think the first step is just being a bit more conscious about the impact that we have on the planet.